Hi everyone, Stepan here. Uh, today I'm going to show you an amazing game. Uh, this was extremely instructive for me uh, during the game, during the analysis, and I, I think you can learn a lot from this one about positional chess, about long-term sacrifices, uh, about long-term compensation, and about, well, power of, of protected past pawns, and how material is something that we should look at abstractly and not... And, oh, oh, okay, I'll just show you the game. So I'm, I'm playing an opponent about 200 points higher rated than me. I started with the London system and I was preparing several different things. I wasn't sure what he was going to go for. Uh, there were a couple of options that he'd played before. Okay, he plays d5, bishop f4, knight f6, e3, c5. Okay. And from here we get into... The, the main line London position, c, c3, knight c6, knight d2. And here there are a couple of ways to play. Uh, bishop f5 is the most popular, e6 is the most solid, queen b6 is the trickiest. My opponent went for the reversed Karo Khan. He played cd4 and after ed4 we, we have an exchange Karo Khan uh, position uh, basically. Uh, where, for some reason, I have a knight on d2 instead of a bishop on d3. And therefore, uh, black is able to play bishop to f5. Now, white did not make a mistake. This is a theoretical position. You could also look at this as a queen's gambit declined with reversed colors. Basically, there are a couple of plans here. For black, it's the minority attack. And for white, it's a kingside attack. Okay, bishop f5, knight gf3, e6 all very normal. Now here I can go knight h4 straight away, uh, trying to chase the bishop away, and I went queen b3 uh, first, because that sort of misplaces the queen. This is a Karo Khan move. Uh, in the exchange Karo Khan, once bishop g4 is played instead of bishop to f5 attacking the queen, white plays queen to b3, uh, often forcing the queen either to, uh, excuse me, to d7 or to c8. Uh, because queen b6 uh, is not such a good move. Uh, in this case, queen b6 is actually a very interesting move. Why is that? Uh, I'll just quickly show you what I'm talking about. So in the exchange Karo Khan, uh, we reach this position, c3, knight f6, bishop f4, uh, and bishop to g4, queen b3. Uh, queen b6 is not good here because white can exchange and play knight a3. And black's best move is actually to play e6 and after knight b5 to play king to d7. Now, I enjoy playing these positions with black even though they are considered to be suboptimal compared to the main lines. Because I, I sort of feel that this end game, especially if white decides to, to take the bishop on g6 eventually, with, for example, something like this, which I've had before, uh, is very nice to play with two rooks open. But uh, in this case, the knight is already on d2, so queen b6 would have been far more interesting, because in, in this case, if I take, which I, I wouldn't do, I don't have knight a3, and, and this is sort of a, no, a normal plan to undermine my, my structure. My opponent went queen c8, though, which is also fine, doesn't double the b-pawns. Okay, uh, now I went knight h4, and he went for the move which I was prepared for. Not for this game, but, but I was analyzing this position a while back, and uh, I, I knew it. Okay, bishop e4. I decided to take d4, and, uh, and now the, the, the tournament in Arco was actually played with those plastic screens over the board, and you just couldn't make a move without making a mess. And I actually, I reached for my g3 pawn, and I, uh, the bishop fell over, the knight moved, and I just, with my sleeve, I, 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 my king fell over, and I just messed up the board. I said Jadub, and my, my opponent didn't mind. Of course, I, I want to play g3, because otherwise I, I could end up losing a piece. So anyway, after a bit of a mess on the board, I played g3. Bishop to e7, knight to g2. And this is a normal position. This has been reached about 20 times before, and it's it's fine for both colors. Uh, 
after black castles white continues bishop to e2 and here he played queen to d7 uh, a more common move is knight to d5 straight away but but that's fine and i castled he went knight to d5 and in this position i, I honestly wouldn't mind him taking my bishop so i played rook a to e1 okay now uh here is where the the interesting stuff starts so what are the features of this position well white obviously has a positional advantage for the moment why is that uh, well black's pawn structure is ruined if he wishes to uh, to advance uh, and sort of defend his e4 pawn with with f5 then black is running into f3 where after uh, black trades if black takes on f3 my bishop is amazing on f3, staring at the entire diagonal, and e6 becomes weak. And if black allows white to take after f5, f3, fe4, fe4, then plans like bishop to d1 and bishop to c2 and simply rounding up this pawn become fairly easy. So one, one thing is clear. There are two plans for white here. Uh, plan A. Play f3 as soon as possible, uh, force the trade, or the other plan, uh, put enough pressure on e4 to provoke f5 and then play f3, because in that case, as I said, e6 is going to be weak and the bishop is going to be good on f3. Uh, another feature of this position is that the e4 pawn is actually making a mess in white's position. It's, it's making development very hard uh, and it's controlling some key squares. And you can imagine that if black gets his plan in, and black's plan is also quite clear, black wants to play e5, break open the structure, ideally get the knight into e5 after a capture, or put enough pressure that the d4 pawn is lost, and then jump into the f3 square with the knight, maybe play rook d8, and then get the rook into d2, and sort of play like he has an isolated queen's pawn, but it, it's an isolated king's pawn on e4, which gives uh, very different attacking prospects, but very good attacking prospects nonetheless. Okay, so, so those are the features of the position. My opponent did decide to take on f4, and, and I took back with the knight, of course. It was very interesting to take with the pawn, and I, I spent a lot of time thinking here. So if I take with the pawn and... Uh, weaken my king like this, there are a couple of upsides. The first upside is that I have the e3 square for my knight, which is a very natural square in the center of the board. Uh, I can easily play f5 if I wish to get rid of my weakness. After I play f3, I can also activate my rook. And as I can also go for a very simple plan of king h1 and start attacking on the king side. With my queen on b3 and with my bishop to eventually uh, with my bishop eventually able to come to c4, of course you have to mind knight a5, uh, this is a strong attacking position for white. Uh, of course f5 in this position would mean a terminal weakness in, in black's position, and that's the e5 square and the e6 pawn, so that simply wouldn't work. Uh, probably just f3 here, and, and after takes takes, you can see that e6 is... is very close to falling. If something like rook f6, then rook e2 and, and start doubling up. But I took with the knight in the end because I thought that this has to be sounder, and it is. Uh, knight takes f4 is a more natural move. Uh, my opponent went bishop g5, and knight g2, I don't want to allow him to double my pawns uh, like that. I want to keep my knight. If I don't have a knight, then a pawn on f4 is just a weakness because I don't have knight e3 and f5. He played king h8, uh, getting away from the diagonal, preparing f5, and I played queen to b5. And the queen to b5 is a, a double purpose move. Firstly, it gains a tempo on the bishop, and if, if the bishop moves away, for example, bishop to e7, then my queen can get into the position. And I'm not saying this is the best option, but you can imagine if f5 is ever played, then knight f4 and knight g6 become very strong threats. Well, let, let me just show you that. So, so something like this. This is weak. This is weak. The rook is hanging. Uh, this seems like a very good position. Bishop c4 coming. The other thing after queen to b5 is that if the bishop doesn't retreat, if black plays f5, then f3 
actually becomes much stronger because the bishop is hanging. So after f3, uh, black is not forced to take, but probably should take. Uh, and uh, let me just show you the options. If, for example, a6 chasing my queen away, then queen b3 attacking e6, ef3, bishop f3, let's say rook e8, I just go rook e2. And if I can prevent e5, then I have far less weaknesses than black. For example, bishop f6, rook f1. Yeah, uh, rook f1 wouldn't be good here. I'm actually hanging bishop d4, uh, giving up uh, a rook and two pawns for, for two pieces. So I would have to be slightly more careful. For example, queen c4 first, and then preparing rook f1. And this would have been fine. Other options, uh, black can try e5, which seems interesting. And after d5, this cannot be recaptured, but a6 first, queen b3, knight e5, f4. There's a tactical justification for this. Knight f3, bishop f3. E f3, rook f3. This would have been a position, simply a pawn up. Or after uh, f5, f3, maybe bishop d2 can be played, which is really no issue. This stops e5 because the, the queen is at the end of the line. So basically f3 becomes much stronger. And that's the reason why I played queen b5. I was intending to play f3. And, and <clears throat> again, there, there are a couple of ways to to look at this position. The, the way a strong player would look at it is I need to get rid of the e4 pawn to be able to move my pieces freely. Uh, I also need to get rid of the e4 pawn to create a weakness on e6. What I thought was, okay, e5 cannot be played for the moment, f4 cannot be played for the moment. Uh, why don't I start putting a bit more pressure on his position before playing f3? And that, that's a huge positional mistake, allowing this pawn to stay there. f3 would have just resolved the issue immediately. Instead, I played bishop d1, which is a bad move. And I would even say it's a very bad move. The, the intention is clear. I, I want to put pressure either on this diagonal or on this diagonal. Okay. And my plan was to, to drop my queen back, get it to h5, and in conjunction with my bishop, start creating chances. I can go h4, and I can then go knight f4, and, and start piling the pressure. He just continued rook a8. I played bishop c2. Queen c7, queen e2. Okay, this uh, is, is a strong idea. As I said, f3 would have been much stronger, but queen h5 is also a threat, because... After, you can imagine if, if black does nothing, let's say queen h5, and again, let, let's say black does nothing, then maybe g4, g6, queen h3. Th this is becoming hard for black to hold, I think, because all of my pieces will be coming in very shortly. So he prevented that with g6. Okay, now, uh, again, a bad move. And this one is, is even worse than, than, than bishop to d2. What I should have played here is bishop to a4. And bishop a4 is a strong strategic idea, which I did not consider at all. Why is it strong? Well, firstly, my, my bishop is a bad piece. With g6 being played, the hopes of a kingside attack are completely gone. These pawns on the light squares uh, make my bishop a bad piece. This knight is a very strong piece. Why is that? Well, black wants to play e5. And if I take and the knight comes into e5, then knight f3, knight d3, I'm, I'm getting crushed. For the moment, the knight is pinned to the rook. So this basically forces a trade. And let's say rook d8, unpinning, bishop takes, queen takes, knight e3. And e5, let's say, h4, let's chase the bishop away, takes, takes. This would have been much better than what happened in the game. Of course, my the pawn structure on my king is, is not good, but my center is fairly strong, and I would say that his king is also unsafe. So th this would have been strong. Instead, I played bishop b1, which... <sighs> trying to explain bishop b1 is hard because it sounds stupid, but I wanted to play a4 and bishop a2, instead of playing bishop to b3, because that runs into knight a5. And I desperately wanted my bishop on this diagonal, which doesn't make much sense. I, I, my bishop is actually much better on this diagonal. 
So bishop b1 is a waste of tempo. He played queen f7. Uh, he could have played a much stronger move, e5, just breaking my center immediately, using the fact that I've lost too much time. Uh, the response to e5 has to be d5. I cannot allow the knight into f3. So the knight drops back to e7. I go c4. Knight c8, preparing knight d6. Okay, let's chase the bishop away. Bishop h6, maybe knight e3. Maybe I can hold this, but it's really unclear. This is such a poor piece. Uh, Black's pieces are, are all perfect. And Black is going to slowly but surely move his pawns forward until I'm suffocated. But he played queen of 7 instead. Uh, I played rook d1, which makes e5 slightly worse, because d5 is already defended. Rook d8. Queen b5. A nothing move, uh, preventing f4, threatening bishop e4, but that, that's, that just runs into rook d5. And I actually wanted him to play rook d5. Uh, why did I want him to play rook d5? Because in my mind it made e5 weaker, because I could get my bishop to this diagonal and finally start threatening something. Okay, e5. Uh, now, my first intention was to go knight e3, of course. To be able to play d5 and this is what i was calculating and expecting i was going to play so so let's say knight e3 rook d7 and d5 uh, th this is not so good for me but it's better than what happened in the game for example knight d7 and c4 this bishop is still bad but you know if if f4 happens I get to play knight g4 with tempo on the on the e5 pawn and then on the queen and then e4 is loose so f4 cannot be played immediately or after knight e3 if if e d4 then knight d5 queen d5 c d4 knight d4 i have to take because otherwise the knight is coming to f3 so i've lost the pawn uh, but should be again better than what happened in the game Instead of that, I played bishop c2. And I was calculating this exchange sacrifice for black uh, for a long time. And I found a move, four moves down the line, which I thought makes the exchange sacrifice uh, not bad for black, but makes the position equal. And if I can trade off enough pieces... I should be better. That's what I thought. And in theory, that's true. It is almost equal. And if I trade pieces, it should be better for me. However, okay, so obviously, if he, he does nothing, if he just moves the rook away, for example, rook d8, then bishop b3, and the queen moves away, and I play d5, this is a great position now, because my bishop is now active, and all of my pieces are coming in, my knight is coming to e3, I can play h4. So after bishop c2, he, he really has no choice. He has to take on d4. Okay, bishop b3, d3, this is all forced, queen e1, and queen d7. He has other squares, but queen d7 unpins, prepares to save the exchange. Okay, bishop takes, queen takes. And this is the move I calculated, knight f4. What's the idea behind knight f4? Well, the idea is I want to be able to prevent knight e5, knight f3, because if even if I don't lose my queen and the knight comes into f3, I am probably just lost. Not probably, but yeah, I'm definitely lost. If bishop takes knight, then pawn takes, actually preventing the pawn from moving forward, uh, weakening the black king in the event of g5 and preventing knight e5. If, I, if, if black takes here, then... I have, I have no issues at all, wasting too much time. Of course, my opponent didn't do that. Uh, what else? Uh, if if knight e5, then of course I take the queen. So we basically, I, I, I win a knight because if I take and takes and here and he takes, I, I'm a knight ahead. Okay, so he did take the pawn. Okay, I played queen e3. He cannot take on b2 because knight g6, uh, taking the bishop. And and this actually... 
I don't know what to say about this position, but I think I would rather be white. Uh, because if he doesn't take on c3 now, then, then rook b1 comes. And f for example, let, let's just say king g7, which is not a good move, but let's say. Obviously, white wins. So it's easier for, for, for black to make a mistake. So after queen a2, uh, queen e3, he played queen f7, preventing knight g6. Okay. Finally, I played f3, which I should have played a million moves ago. Rook e8, fe4, of course, he has to take with the pawn. If he doesn't take with the pawn, then d3 is dropping. fe4. And I thought this was okay for me. I mean, it, it almost is. My rooks are active. Uh, my knight is pretty nice. Uh, but but it's much harder to play for white than I thought. And this was a long-term exchange sacrifice by black, which was actually an, a, an amazing solution to the position. Okay, so instead of me breaking the position with f3 and creating weaknesses, black got to have these two pawns on d3 and d4, which make my play very hard. King h1. Uh, King g8, getting away from knight g6. Uh, b4. Uh, b4 is not a good move. Uh, he just plays a6. If he doesn't play a6, then b4 is a good move. But, okay. Rook f1, rook e7. Rook f1. I, I, this now... Well, it doesn't still doesn't threaten anything, but I, I didn't know what to do. I didn't know how to improve my position. Queen c4, and this was an amazing move, after which I played the losing move and... and the position was just over. Uh, I, I cannot defend. I cannot play queen d2 because he just plays e3, and after queen d3, uh, he is going to make a queen eventually. Uh, I can play rook d1, maybe, and after queen c3, I can play b5, and after a b5, maybe I have some hope. This is an engine line, this I didn't even consider during the game. Instead I played the human queen c5 and, and uh, excuse me, whoa, queen c5, and the game was just over. Yeah, uh, after queen c5 it's, it's, it's all gone. So queen c5, bc5, bishop f4, gf4, and this is a very simple win now. Uh, for black, there is no way for me to prevent the pawns from queening. Uh, he's going to play knight c4, knight b2, and win one of my rooks. Uh, I'm gonna have to give up a rook for a pawn. King g2, knight c4, e3, king f3, d2, rook e2, knight b2, and that's it. Uh, I played on for five or six more moves, but it's obviously hopeless. And this was the final move of the game. Uh, this, for me, was a, a great lesson. And I knew what I had to do. I waited too long to do it. Instead of doing what I had to do, instead of breaking the, the center with f3, I wanted to create further weaknesses. I wanted to improve my position a bit more and a bit more and a bit more and a bit more. I waited too long, got punished, and in the end got the lesson in long-term sacrifices, which my opponent played just perfectly from there. Uh, after I took the exchange, he just played much better than me. Still, I, I think it's good that I got to play a game like this. I learned a lot, and the next time I have to play a pawn break, I will think 10 times before delaying it, even for a single move. So please learn from this. Okay, thank you for watching. I uh, hope you got something from this video. Stay tuned for more chess. Bye-bye.